Bonjour tout le monde, good afternoon. This is a consequential moment for NATO, but also for the world. For two days, leaders have been focused on reinforcing NATO's strong defense of democracy. And NATO has been made stronger as we officially welcomed Finland and moved forward on Sweden's succession. Le fait d'être ici, dans un état balte, si près de la Russie, qui mène une guerre illégale contre un autre de ses voisins depuis plus de 500 jours, met en relief la très grande importance de notre défense collective. I arrived in the Baltics a day ahead of the summit and visited the Canadian Armed Forces in Latvia. While there, we made a historic announcement. We are renewing and expanding our contributions to Operation Reassurance. This includes increased financial and troop commitments that will scale up the Canadian-led NATO battle group to a brigade by 2026. Grâce à cet engagement de 2.6 milliards de dollars, on fait plus que doubler le nombre de femmes et d'hommes courageux des forces armées canadiennes qui sont déployés dans le cadre de cet effort multinational. Le Canada s'est mobilisé pour diriger cette force sur le flanc est de l'OTAN. On augmente actuellement nos effectifs parce qu'il faut absolument dissuader toute nouvelle agression de la part de la Russie. Canada has been stepping up in this region of Europe and providing significant support to Ukraine since Putin's annexation of Crimea. We've trained almost 40,000 Ukrainian military and security personnel through Operation Unifier. And I can announce today that through this operation, we're welcoming officer cadets from Ukraine to train at Royal Military College Saint-Jean for an intensive training program developed in partnership with NATO. For over 500 days now, Ukraine has withstood Russian brutalities. Putin made a grave miscalculation. He underestimated Ukrainians' courage, and he underestimated the strength of the West's solidarity and resolve. Today, the G7 came together to announce our enduring support of Ukraine's defense and launched a process to provide long-term, multi-year commitments to their security. Ukraine is fighting to make sure that borders, their own or anywhere else in around the world, mean something that might does not make right. This announcement gives Ukraine the certainty of our support as it protects its citizens, its sovereignty, and its territorial integrity. For support in the more immediate term, we will be providing drone cameras, delivering on a request Ukraine made when I visited Kyiv just a few weeks ago in June. On a également signé une entente avec d'autres alliés pour fournir une formation sur les F-16 aux forces aériennes ukrainiennes. On fournit aussi une aide à la cybersécurité et un financement supplémentaire à l'appui de l'ensemble complet de mesures d'assistance. À ce jour, le Canada a fourni plus de 8 milliards de dollars en soutien militaire, financier et humanitaire à l'Ukraine. On va soutenir le peuple ukrainien aussi longtemps qu'il le faudra, car ils se battent non seulement pour leur liberté et leur démocratie, mais aussi pour les nôtres. Lors de ma rencontre avec le président Zelensky aujourd'hui, j'ai réaffirmé encore une fois le soutien indéfectible du Canada à l'Ukraine. The world is facing many serious challenges, and we must remain ready to respond, no matter what form they take. Climate change is one of these challenges. As Canada deals with its own impacts of climate change, with ongoing wildfires across the country that are particularly bad in British Columbia today, and our thoughts go out to people in BC, as well as significant flooding in parts of Quebec, we see our friends dealing with extreme weather events too, either floods in parts of northeastern United States, fatal mudslides in Japan, and dangerous heat waves in Italy. We're all going to need to be there for each other more and more, given the impacts of climate change. As a northern country, Canada understands well how something like a warming Arctic is reshaping the security landscape. On travaille avec l'OTAN pour mettre en place le Centre d'excellence pour le changement climatique et la sécurité. Plus tôt aujourd'hui, la ministre Anand 
a signé le document, document fondateur du centre qui ouvrira ses portes à Montréal plus tard cette année. En ce moment, on doit être clair sur le fait que la politique climatique est aussi une politique de sécurité, une politique économique et une politique sociale. En effet, lorsque Poutine a tenté de militariser l'énergie, les pays européens ont commencé à réduire leur dépendance à l'égard des combustibles fossiles russes et à se tourner encore plus rapidement vers les énergies propres. Alors que nos alliés effectuent cette transition, le Canada est prêt à être le fournisseur fiable d'énergie propre dont ils auront besoin. Emerging and disruptive technologies also pose a risk to global stability, and as such, Canada has taken a leadership role in bringing together promising startups and innovators to help NATO retain its technological edge. We're doing this through contributions to the Defense Innovation Accelerator for the North Atlantic, Diana. And we're proud that Halifax has been selected to house the North American office. We're also making investments in our defense capabilities at home. Today, we announced a $450 million investment in our fleet of minor warships and auxiliary vessels, which includes vessels, vessels deployed as a part of Operation Reassurance. This is part of the national shipbuilding strategy, which will help create jobs at small and medium-sized shipyards right across Canada. Le contexte de sécurité évolue rapidement à l'échelle mondiale, et le Canada a réalisé des investissements transformateurs au cours des dernières années. Par exemple, on achète 88 avions de chasse F-35, et on a effectué des investissements majeurs pour améliorer considérablement les capacités canadiennes du NORAD pour soutenir la défense continentale de l'Amérique du Nord. I had the chance to speak and meet with leaders from many regions. As NATO came together to talk about Euro-Atlantic security, we also met with partners from the Indo-Pacific. We stand for the same things, including supporting Ukraine and upholding the rules-based international order everywhere, no matter which oceans your coasts touch. The work we've done together at this summit as allies and partners has made NATO an even stronger alliance. We are inextricably bound by our shared values of democracy, freedom and human rights, and the rule of law, and this bond is ironclad. We stand united in support of Ukraine and are more ready than ever to defend and, def and, de defend and deter threats to peace, stability, and prosperity. As Prime Minister, there is no greater responsibility than protecting the safety and security of Canadians, by coming together each year to work with NATO, which is the strongest defense alliance in history, Canada is safeguarding freedom and security around the world, and especially at home.